Absolute value equations. Here's how we start. Let's take a look at this. If you have the absolute value of some stuff and it's equal to A, okay. Is it stuff A in here? Anyways, this breaks up into two different cases. Why? Well, let's see why. Over here with three, I have a question to ask you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right here. Bam! What's the absolute value of three? Three! But wait! What's the absolute value of minus three? It is also three. So wait a minute. If you have the absolute value of stuff equal to something else, that stuff on the inside can be positive, or that stuff on the inside can be negative. And that's where we get to this stuff over here. I need you to break this up into two. Two different scenario. This one and this one. One where the stuff is positive and equal to A or where the stuff is negative and it's equal to A. Okay. So this is presented in a different way. One that's slightly different than how your book does it. So let's make it look like the book like. I'm going to leave this alone. Stuff is equal to A. On this one I want to multiply both sides by the minus sign. So then I multiply this and I get some stuff. And then I multiply that by that minus and I get minus A. Okay. So then that's how most of the books break it down. With a nice or. So when you're doing these absolute value e equations, you need to break it up into two cases. One where the stuff is equal to A, and where the, where the stuff is equal to the opposite of A. Okay, and now let's do some examples. Absolutely. Oh boy. Absolute value equations. These are the early examples. There's some more harder ones on the other video. If you want to go there now, you can go there now. Okay, let's go here now. So either this stuff is positive or this stuff is negative. And that's the right stuff. Oh, oh, oh. It's either 7 or minus 7. Then wrap it up in one nice curly package. It's either minus 7 or 7. And no, order doesn't matter. It's a set. Yeah, the next level, the level level. What if you get something like this? You want something like this. If you recognize something like this, cheap and easy. Here we go. I have the absolute value is equal to a minus two. Now your spider senses should be tingling. Why? Because slang, dog, absolute value makes things positive. Can you have the absolute value equal to a minus number? No. So here, this is no solution. If I can't do it, homie, it can't be done. But you're like, wait, I did it, and I got two answers. Dang it! When you go in, you throw it back up in there. It's not going to work out for you. So now what do we do? Let's do this one. Da-da, do-do. It's a little harder. Blap! What do I do? I break it up into its two cases. One where the stuff is positive, or where the stuff is negative. And here we go. We are going to get two solutions. Here I subtract the two off each side and I see that 3x is equal to a minus 1. Fun. Finish him. And x is equal to a minus 1 third. And I heard that there is another answer. Hmm. Let's get it. So I have a 3x. I subtract that 2 off each side is equal to a minus 3. Oh, finish him. I divide both sides by 3. And here we see that x is going to be a minus 1. Fun. Jack it! 
You go and you throw those back up into the original. Well, let's see. Minus one third times three is a minus one. Minus one plus two is one. The absolute value of one is one. Then we go and we check the other one. So then what do we do? We take this minus one and we put it up in there. Minus one times three is a minus three. Minus three plus two is a minus one. The absolute value of minus one is one. They both work. Box in order doesn't matter. Yeah. Kind of flat.